This is my olive grove. It's on a hill and the blackberries were starting to um, take over as they are in other areas but I really didn't want them here because they're in amongst my olive trees. So I thought I'd try an experiment which was to put a lot of stable hay down on the ground and see if the chickens would um, scratch away at it and at the same time get rid of blackberry. On the whole they've got rid of most of it. There still are a few little bits and pieces around but they're certainly keeping it in check. There's a little bit more there and a little bit up the, the hill but it's certainly not threatening to take over the whole hill like it was. Bracken is another one of my weeds that likes to grow here. I'm happy for that to stay on the hill at the moment because the danger with mulching on a hill like this and letting the chickens into it is that gravity sends it all downhill in the end. So the, the bracken ends up keeping it um, in place a bit longer. And you can see that it has started to creep downhill. We only put it up top for that very reason because I knew that gravity would end up having hay all down the hill. Because it has been a success I've decided to try it out the back which is a real problem area for me that I've had to brush cut each year and is the next part of this video. Here are my girls and boys. They're just paying attention because the dogs are in the vicinity. They were all head down bum up a minute ago. Every week I get a load of stable hay from Angora goats and we spread it all around the property. And this is where we put it last week. And uh, they're just going through it. I have another load in the back of the ute now, ready to unload, so we'll bring it out here. I'm just putting it around um, our new plantings that we've done this winter. I'll probably put another three ute loads of hay down here, even over the grass. Uh, including the one that we're going to do as soon as I've finished doing this. This whole area grows buzzy. That's the carpeted greenery you see. There's um, thistles, bracken and foxglove which has escaped from somewhere and is having a lovely time here. I bring the brush cutter through here every year um, to keep it under control but this year I've decided to put down all this straw um, because I've had good success with it over amongst my olive trees which is quite a steep area and had quite a lot of um, blackberry growing on the hill. I found if you put enough of the stable hay down the chickens get in and scratch around and they've actually killed off most of the blackberry. This is a hakea that's been here for several years as well. Uh, there's one over there and Last year we planted some cutting grass as well. Um, and the idea between these, these are all prickly hakea and the cutting grass. And the idea of, is to provide habitat for my fairy wrens, which are here all year round, and other small birds. And the other idea is to um, crowd out the blackberry, because I don't want that. We can get some fruit off it in summertime but last year was the first year it was even really edible. It's usually too dry and I certainly don't water it. Not like I used to at the other place. I had a patch that I cultivated and the, the blackberries, although seedy because they were wild, were really quite edible. This hakea here, uh, this one's microcarpa, I think, from memory. Uh, this is one I planted several years ago as a test and it's doing very well along with its compatriots all by one which got to probably two-thirds of that size and then just died for whatever reason. So when this area is all grown up with another little hake here there, that big one, uh, there are two there in the tree guard at the back is another bit of cutting grass, more hake here. So it's all the prickly hake here and cutting grass as, as the main habitat that I'm creating. It's on my back fence line, um, which I don't go to much at all. You can see the fence right there. 
So this one isn't really a prickly hakea. It's a hakea nodosa or yellow needlebush. It's slightly prickly. I can still do that with it, but I can feel it. It's annoying, but it wouldn't deter me. Whereas behind it is a um, hakea microcarpa. Microcarpa have the most delightful seed pods once they're open and they will persist on the bush for years. And this one here is Hakea teretifolia, also known as dagger hakea, for good reason. It's the bitiest of all the hakeas. Um, this tree, or shrub rather, is a great success for me because I bought it as a not very happy young plant for a dollar off the unhappy plants table at the, uh, the native plant nursery that I got it from. And about five years later it's developed into this beautiful shrub. You can see some of the seed pods here. These are green ones. The seeds haven't released yet. These also persist. There's a blackberry thicket here that I've allowed to stay because it still provides habitat. And this is where we do pick our berries from. So that's Teratophilia in the background on the left hand side there. And the blackberries extend up here. Up to this uh, Acacia melanoxin, which is self-sown. It was one of the, the two trees on the block when we first bought it. <laughs> 